Welcome to a Xilinx Quick Take video. My name is Jason Lawley, Technical Marketing Manager with Xilinx. In the video today, we're going to look at how to get the best performance with your Xilinx DMA for PCI Express. The first thing we want to look at are what are the factors in achieving optimum PCI Express performance. Well, the first thing we want to do is make sure that we select a link speed and link width that's appropriate for uh, our design. Now the maximum that Xilinx supports is Gen 3 by 16. In the video today we're going to be looking at a design that is Gen 3 by 8. Next up is the maximum payload size. Now here the maximum payload size is going to be determined by the smallest maximum payload size that the system can support. While the Xilinx IP supports 1024 bytes of maximum payload size, most systems in the market today support between 128 or 256 bytes. Now when we start looking at things that we can control in terms of how our design operates, the thing that we can control is the size of the transfer that we specify. The larger the size of the transfer, the better performance that we're going to get, and we'll show you that here in a minute. Next is the number of DMA channels that we enable on our DMA controller. The more channels we enable, again, the better performance we get. The trade-off is that it takes more logic resources inside of our device. And finally, the last thing that we'll look at is using polling rather than interrupts to achieve high performance. Now, polling's going to take away from your processor because that processor now has to go and pull a location periodically to see when a transfer has completed, uh, but you'll see that it also gives us better performance. So let's look at the, how, uh, the basic operation of a DMA. So the first thing is, let's get some terminology down. When we want to move data from system memory down to our PCI Express endpoint, we call that a host to card transfer, or H to C. Likewise, when we want to move data from our PCI Express endpoint to our system memory, that is a card to host transfer. Now what's going to happen is we're going to have buffers that have been allocated in system memory and we have our endpoint memory. And we have descriptors and those descriptors are what is going to tell our DMA engine where I'm going to write data to or where I'm going to read data from and then where I'm going to put that data as well as how much data is there. Now we'll look at an example of that here in just a few minutes, but this gives you an idea of what a typical DMA system looks like. All right, so the design we're gonna look at is a um, IPI design that I went ahead and put together took me only 20 to 30 minutes to get this design put together. Uh, it's really pretty straightforward and pretty easy to implement yourself. Uh, what I have is a DMA engine uh, down on the bottom. Uh, I do have two channels of it turned on, and it is using the master port. Now that master port is going to two different memories. One is our on-chip BRAM memory, and one is our off-chip DDR4 memory. Now in addition to that, I've also turned on our AXI Lite master interface. This port, what it does is it's going to map an additional PCI Express bar into our AXI address space. So when I, when I do this, I can now issue PCI Express reads and writes to that particular bar that maps to the AXI Lite, and I can do single D word reads and writes to things within my system. In this case, I've hooked up the system management wizard which lets me monitor things like temperature and voltages. I also have an AXI performance monitor uh, connected to the uh, master port of the DMA. So again, I can now use that performance monitor if I want to know exactly what's going on inside the FPGA in terms of uh, the performance that I'm getting. And then I've enabled some I.O. Uh, so that if I ever wanted to expand this and be able to read and write to I.O. outside of this uh, particular IPI, des IPI design, I could do that. All right, so we're going to use in this design, we're going to use a KCU 105, which is uh, a card that we've used in other videos before. It's capable of operating with a uh, Gen 3 by 8. Uh, so that's going to give us about 8 gigabytes per second per direction in terms of the theoretical maximum bandwidth that we can that we can get to. So I've already got this card up and going in the system. It's uh, operating at Gen 3 by 8. The system is 256 bytes of maximum payload size. This is an Intel Z77 platform. 
what I want to do is go ahead and show you that if you download this Xilinx answer record 65444, this is where our driver and application resides. Uh, there's a readme file that tells you exactly what you need to do to compile the driver. Uh, as you see, I've sped it up here to show you that I'm doing these steps, uh, but you can go ahead and follow along to compile and then load the driver. Now once it's loaded, there is a performance application uh, that comes along with it. I've modified it a little bit so it doesn't scroll past, it's clearing each time, but what you see is we're getting uh, pretty pretty high numbers. So we're going to do uh, host to card transfers first, and we're going to send a specific number of transfers. Uh, you see now we're doing card to host, and again when we start with those smaller transfers we get uh, not as high a performance, but then we very quickly get to the performance levels that we expect. Now this matches with the chart that you see here, and in this chart this is what you see from most companies that have Peace Express DMAs. And this is what we expect, these are really good numbers. But now what happens when we go back and we try to run a, a transfer using uh, the built-in uh, commands. So in this case, we have it set up to do a DMA2 device, uh, which is a host to card transfer. We're going to send 4 kilobytes of data. Now when we run that command and we do the calculation, we see we actually only got 240 megabytes of data. And this is compared to the 6.9 gigabytes that we were expecting, which we saw previously. So maybe, maybe that's not quite right. Let's go ahead and look something a little bit bigger. Maybe there's a size issue here. So we're going to do a 32 megabyte transfer. Uh, again, we're going to do this from the system down to the card, or to the host down to the card. And when we run that, and again we do the calculation, and we see it's 5.5 gigabytes per second. So again, not near the 7 gigabytes per second that we're expecting. So let's take a look at why that is. All right, so now here we see again that hardware number performance chart. And the way that we get this performance chart, and pretty much everybody else who shows you a chart like this, is what we do is we create a string of descriptors, and those descriptors are in a ring. So the operating system is never becoming involved when we measure these hardware numbers. Now this is great for being able to showcase the performance that the DMA engines are able to achieve, and, and it's a really good test for us to make sure that our DMA engine can handle any type of data that's thrown at it. But it doesn't really give designers the idea of what they need to do and what kind of numbers they can expect in their designs. So let's take a look at how a system operates first to, to get an idea of what needs to be done to, to get better performance. So in this case, we're going to show you a card to host transfer. Um, so the driver is going to go ahead and set up uh, a bunch of descriptors. Those descriptors point to memory that's been allocated to us to do our transfer to. So the driver, once it has those, that, those descriptors set up, it's going to write down with a pointer to that very first descriptor. And, and then it's also going to start the DMA engine by setting what we call the run bit. When the run bit gets set, the DMA engine will actually go and fetch those descriptors from system memory. Now, if those descriptors are adjacent, it's able to do that with a single read. If not, there's a pointer to the next descriptor. And, and we can just fetch those descriptors one at a time as we need to to fill up the buffer space we have in the engine. As those descriptors get operated on, we create PCI Express transaction layer packets to write to the different buffers that we have allocated to us. Now, there's probably going to be more than one TLP uh, that gets generated per descriptor, especially if we're sending something like four kilobytes or, or larger, um, but anything larger than the maximum payload size. And so we're going to continue doing this process uh, until we get a descriptor that has the stop bit set. Now, once that last descriptor gets read in, there's an interrupt that gets sent from the DMA engine back to the driver saying that everything is complete. And at that point, the host has to do a context switch uh, with the operating system to go from whatever it was doing on to go service that interrupt. And then once that interrupt's been serviced, that's when the next DMA transfer can begin. Now, that's why we see um, this really 
low data rate when we look at this 4 kilobyte transfer compared to what we expect or the 32 megabyte transfer from what we expect is that we see a really uh, large variance in, in how long that context takes to, to happen within that operating system. And it really depends upon where that operating system is at uh, when it gets that interrupt to how long it takes to go and service the interrupt. So what we've done is we've put together some performance numbers that are maybe more typical of what you can expect to see. And here we see that uh, using interrupts, using MSI interrupts, doing both host to card and card to host, it's in that 2 kilobyte to 32 kilobyte range um, that we see a pretty big difference of of the type of performance that we get. So the first thing that we talked about is doing larger transfer sizes. And we see eventually uh, we can get up to pretty high levels uh, using those, those larger transfer sizes. We also talked about using multiple channels. And here you can see the, the blue is one channel, the red is two channels enabled, and the green is four channels enabled. And so you can see that the more channels we enable, the more concurrent transactions we can have going on, and those context switches don't come and hurt us as much. Now the other thing that we talked about is being able to use polling mode to increase our performance. So here you can see with a card to host transfer, um, anything that's less than about 256K, especially when we're using only one channel, can have a pretty drastic impact on the type of performance that we get when we compare it to what we would be able to achieve using uh, interrupt modes alone. So if we put it all together, um, what you can see here is the best performance that we can get is when we have four channels turned on and we're in polling mode. But depending upon the amount of data that you plan to send during any one transaction, uh, you can see that, that it may be beneficial for you to send more data at once and use uh, a smaller number of channels and thus a fewer number of resources and less power and everything that goes along with having a, a smaller DMA engine. And so this will give you an idea of some things you can do in your design to get your optimal performance. All right, so let's go ahead and recap. Um, from the system side, make sure you check and get the optimum links width and speed that you need for the amount of data that you need to transfer. If you do have a chance to choose a system, choose one that has a large as possible maximum payload size as that makes a huge difference in the performance that you're able to achieve. On the DMA side, choose the largest transfer size possible for your application. Uh, then use additional DMA channels to get to the level that you need to be at. And then finally, you have polling as, a, as an option to pull a location to get better performance. Now, all of this is available in answer record 68049. You can see a write-up that goes through uh, these different charts. So if you get a chance, go ahead and go take a look. Thanks for watching the video.